Chair and dear audience, let me guide you through my PhD research, Changes of the Mental Health Through Pediatric Cancer Experience. My name is Martin Sabados. I'm a pediatric resident at the Pediatric Center, Semmelweis University. My supervisor is Miklós Garami, my SMS is Mark Hernátfői, and uh, Gergely Agócs and Silvia Kisdala are the statisticians helping to reach my goals. So I have a vision that in the near future, childhood cancer patients and survivors will live a rich and fulfilling life. And I'd like to take a part of it by establishing a well-designed follow-up system, focusing on the quality of life and the well-being of these patients. I have two ongoing projects to reach my mission. The first one uh, was a meta-analysis with the title Association of Tumor Location with Anxiety and Depression in Childhood Brain Cancer Survivors. So pediatric brain cancer survivors have still a really high chance to develop affective disorders and symptoms. For example, major depression occurs around in 20% of these patients. We also know that uh, the different brain locations uh, are responsible for different functions. There is a phrase, growing in the deficit, which means uh, that all these diseases uh, can occur later in life, causing a lot of really severe consequences. With the right time diagnosis, uh, we can help uh, to uh, decrease the recurrence and all the impairments uh, they, uh, these disorders cause. And uh, with the right time diagnosis, we will also have the opportunity for early and successful treatment. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, these deficits and these diseases won't occur necessarily right in front of us, so therefore is a long-term follow-up uh, really recommended for these patients. So my aim was with this study to identify uh, that among the different brain tumor locations which uh, psychiatric diseases, which affective disorders have the highest prevalence. That led me to my clinical question, which is, does the location of the tumor predict the occurrence and the types of affective disorders in children with CNS tumors? And I hypothesized that there is an association between them. Uh, my search was conducted in five different databases, and after the selection process, I found uh, 42 eligible articles, which were all descriptive studies. So let me show you my results. In this slide, you can see the prevalences of major depression on the left and the anxiety disorders. Uh, the, uh, we had two subgroups based on the anatomical separation of the brain, infratentorial and supratentorial brain tumor patients. So the events are the diagnosed uh, patients with uh, MDD or anxiety disorders made by psychiatrists. You can see a huge level of heterogeneity in, in the studies which are mainly caused by the different follow-up times, the different studies used, and also the subjective part of the diagnosis itself. Uh, in case of uh, depression and uh, anxiety disorder, we found no significant difference between the two subgroups, but the overall effect was 22%, uh, which uh, indicates a really high number and that almost one in four patients suffer from major depression and anxiety. These two figures show the different scores the patients achieved on depression and anxiety questionnaires, where uh, the measure of effect was the standardized mean scores of the different questionnaires. We uh, had the opportunity, based on a consultation with professionals and also one uh, article provided uh, us to pool uh, these different questionnaires uh, and to measure it on a standardized level. So as a result, in both uh, depression and anxiety cases, infratentorial brain tumor patients scored uh, significantly higher scores, which uh, means, of course, worse outcomes. Oh, sorry. So uh, as a strength, I'd like to highlight the comprehensiveness of the analysis and also that, that it pointed out many missing informations which are needed for a more precise follow-up of these patients. And uh, from the limitations, uh, there were a lot of confounding factors not measured, and also there were little, we were really in lack of data about the follow-up times. As a conclusion, I can say that uh, brain cancer survivals have significantly more emotional impairments than the healthy population, 
and uh, inflammatory brain tumor patients and survivors have a slightly higher chance to develop anxiety and these uh, anxiety and depression symptoms. Uh, and with that, uh, we should put more focus on the infratentera brain tumor patients. Of course, uh, closer follow-up is recommended for all the brain tumor patients. And for future research, I'd like to highlight the importance of individual patient data and also the universal and harmonized measurements uh, to, <clears throat> to evaluate these patients. My study was published in the Child and Adolescent Psychiatry and Mental Health Journal at the uh, end of last year. So my second project is the Hungarian Linguistic and Cultural Adaptation of the Minneapolis Manchester Quality of Life Instrument. In the last few decades, uh, in pediatric oncology, the focus shifted more uh, towards the long-term effects and the quality of life instead of the survival itself. So heart-related heart quality of life is a multidimensional construct that affects the patient's relationships, work environment, safety, and the autonomy of the patient. Uh, and to provide the best uh, quality of life uh, is uh, multidisciplinary and really an exhausting work. And the first uh, part of it could be uh, the measurement of the quality of life. Uh, and we are, uh, so these um, measurements and uh, questionnaires are really scarce in general, especially in Hungary. So my aim was to provide uh, this uh, quality of life questionnaire for the uh, survivors in Hungary, with that to establish a better follow-up system and with that to improve their quality of life. Here you can see the design of the questionnaire. It's a self-report uh, questionnaire for the ages between ter uh, 13 and 20. It has seven different factors. Some are kind of specific for patients with chronic illness, for example, body image, social functioning, outlook on life. I'm uh, ready with the translation process, and right now I'm at the test and retest uh, part of the adaptation. We collect uh, the data in the neuro-oncological ward of uh, the pediatric center, and for control group, we measure uh, students from the Újpesti Babics Mihály Grammar School. Uh, the patients uh, fill the questionnaire, right? Uh, for example, when they are waiting in the outpatient clinic, and uh, exactly two weeks later, they fill the questionnaire again. Here I stay right now with the data collection and I plan to finish it uh, till the end of July. After the adaptation, uh, we'd like to use this questionnaire on a regular basis, uh, also in the clinic during the treatment and at the checkup visits also. And uh, I'd like to use it as a measurement tool for prospective cohort studies as well. So as a summary, uh, here you can see my two ongoing uh, projects. Uh, and I'd like to uh, say my special thanks to my TDK students who helped me a lot uh, in, in these two uh, studies. Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank you for your attention with a quote from Noam Spencer. Mental health is not a destination, but a process. It's about how you drive, not where you're going. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Martin. I would like to ask about your first project, about your meta-analysis, because uh, you mentioned that uh, as a limitation that you have confounders. And based on your opinion, what are the most important ones? Because you highlighted just one. Yeah, so uh, we just uh, checked the locations of the tumor, not the tumor type uh, itself. We didn't consider the different treatments that the patients receive, but uh, <clears throat> regarding the treatment, it's, uh, there are some studies that say uh, there's not a really big different difference between the um, uh, treatment of, so the cause of the treatment of, of the brain tumors and also the environmental status. So uh, there is a lot that will uh, influence the affective disorders like family status, work environment, as I mentioned. So, yeah. This should be measured, and I also plan to uh, at uh, and, uh, performing the prospective cohort study. So, yeah. I have a question about your second topic. 
Uh, I was wondering why did you choose uh, two weeks uh, for the retesting of the patients? Oh, thank you, thank you for the question. Uh, actually, uh, this two weeks for, uh, was chosen because this uh, test and retest uh, reli reliability uh, it's two things that uh, the condition won't change. So most likely a quality of life of the patient won't really change in two weeks. Of course, there could be some reasons, but, uh, but most likely not. And uh, it shouldn't be so close to, uh, to let the patients to remember their answers. So it will be just uh, work like a new measurement. So that's why we choose these two weeks. You mentioned that a close and frequent uh, checkup, follow-up is needed in case of um, uh, survivor patients. Do you have some plans how to uh, deal with this or how to uh, plan this in the future? Yes, uh, actually planning the cohort study, we had a lot of discussions about that. Uh, I think it's the most, uh, the most problematic part of the follow-up is during the treatment because all the different uh, patients, and so with different tumors, receive uh, really different treatments in regards, for example, one patient can receive a lot of chemotherapy in like uh, uh, two months, and one just one course of chemotherapy every month. So uh, during the treatment, we don't really want to do it, and it's not recommended to do it like in every month or so like in time periods, but in treatment milestones. And after their treatment, we plan to evaluate them uh, at every checkup visit, uh, which is like at, after the treatment, it will be, they will come every month, then in every three months, and so on. In your second project, I saw that you named the second group as patients of treatment. What do you exactly mean by that? Are they cancer free? Uh, yeah, they are not cancer free. Uh, it's patients of treatment. I didn't go into the details, but uh, this group, uh, we chose uh, these patients uh, after one year of the end of, so, sorry, so one year after the last treatment. So they are uh, of treatment for a year, yeah. <laughs> like that, so, and we can call them cancer-free after five years of event-free survival. Yeah, that's the, like, the definition. So they are not cancer-free, but they are, right, in the stable state at the moment. They don't receive any medication. Yeah. I have two questions. One, uh, one is, um, why did you end up to translate the Minnesota question? So what was the rationale behind it instead of using, uh, like, existing uh, other quality of life questionnaires? And my second one is whether you know what is the incidence of like, uh, like clinically diagnosed uh, uh, depression and anxiety, which probably requires medication in this uh, patient group. Yeah. Is there any data on that? So uh, on your first question, uh, like in, in Hungary, uh, where the uh, normally and frequently used quality of life questionnaires like PEDESQL and KidScreen are not really uh, specific for this, uh, for this uh, group and uh, for these uh, patients. So we looked through a uh, lot of different questionnaires and uh, we, uh, with uh, the uh, psychologist in the neuro-oncology ward and we decided that could be the best because it's kind of detailed but uh, not too much and has specific questions that, that uh, are great for uh, the follow-up of, of the patient. So yeah, that, that was the reason. There wasn't a, like a direct uh, decision that that will be definitely the best in the world, but that we, we chose that it, it fits well. And uh, the, uh, on your second uh, question, uh, you mean at during their treatment, so when they are actively after After the treatment. Yeah. Uh, all the psychiatric diseases, like uh, as I showed, uh, is like major depression is around 20 first, uh, 20 percent uh, uh, there for for these patients, like uh, really diagnosed. Oh, so this is, is, is diagnosed with interview, not with questionnaires. The with with interviews, so, so yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just wondering whether the 
incidence of um, depression is elevated in children in, with other type of with other tumors, or just with, or and is it there a significant difference between uh, depression rates uh, between, among the tumors? Yes, so it's uh, in in every aspect of uh, so in quality of life and the and in other psychiatric diseases, uh, brain tumor leads unfortunately or sadly or yeah, uh, and they receive uh, therapy uh, to to the brain to the head. Uh, that's one reason uh, there are a lot of different. Uh, uh, side effects that the treatment cause, like uh, movement impairments and cognitive decline, that altogether delay to the most uh, most frequent uh, psychiatric diseases. But uh, of course, uh, other uh, tumor patients have. Do you intend to compare these data to? Yes. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. Also, uh, so so the. The cohort study that uh, we we will uh, perform, <coughs> we want to have uh, brain tumor patients, like hematological uh, patients, patients with ALL, uh, and we think that they uh, they are less uh, Im less impaired in these regards. Also with control patients. So yeah, not every tumor type. But uh, we will do our best and what we can. Yeah. Thank you. May I have another question? And uh, sorry, just uh, curious. Uh, what do you think that? Um, um, just I was wondering that um, uh, I, having a child with such a disease really extorts the, the family. And uh, do you think that uh, it's worth investigating whether the family still remains a protective environment for the child uh, after what? So whether a depression occurs just because of the alteration of the family, I don't know, status or, or mental health or something, or because of the disease? Yeah, I, I think that family status and uh, intimate relations and family itself is, is like a, really a huge impact on, on quality of life and, and the affective disorders also. And uh, as, as a side project, we uh, actually, I, I hope that gives you an answer. Uh, we uh, had uh, uh, semi-structured interviews with uh, previously treated medulloblastoma patients, which is an infratentorial tumor. And uh, we asked what happened in the last 10 years, what, what helped you, what, what would be better for you. So, uh, and like, like mainly they, they mentioned uh, the family and also the teachers and, uh, and all the uh, psychologist that, uh, but but family status is like crucial for for us investigating. Thank you. It's not really a question I have, but probably a word of advice. If I remember well, you said that you're using the results to predict depression. There was a sentence with prediction, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so the the thing is that. Prediction and association are very similar, but they're not synonyms. So I would avoid using these two. Perhaps call it relationship, and that's a more broader okay. term. And it clarified because I was looking for predictions throughout the presentation, and I didn't find yeah. it. Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. How we can implement this in everyday clinical practice? Uh, of course, these patients need uh, more attention, but what do you think? The focus is on the early detection, or we can prevent somehow these uh, kind of effects, or what do you think about that? Yes, um, <clears throat> I think yeah, early de detection is, is really crucial, but of course, as in like every disease, like to prevent it will be the best. But uh, right at the start of, of their treatment and right after the diagnosis, that's like impossible to prevent such, a, such an impairment in, in the effective side. So uh, yeah, uh, we have a multidisciplinary team like psychologists, uh, social workers uh, who, who are ready and give, give their best to prevent it. And of course, that will be the best, but uh, but yeah, not impossible, but really hard. So so both, yeah. I would like to have a comment on the phrasing. Also, you use the word uh, unacceptably high. Uh, although we 
I think all agree that it is unacceptably high. I still believe that you should not use that uh, wording in a scientific presentation. It's uh, purely emotional and it, uh, I think it is not a place to be. Okay. As I understood well, you have a theoretical model that uh, brain tumor, the location and treatment uh, could specifically cause or there is some causative relationship between uh, the type, location uh, of the tumor and major depression. Yes. This, is, this is the theory. It, it, yes. Is this? Okay. Um, the, uh, do you plan to try to dig a little bit deeper and try to discover whether from this spectrum, what is the causative agent? So if, if brain, so some drug which causes depression or some spe specific tumor or specific location, uh, the question I, I raised is because if there is some preventable or uh, uh, preventable factor. For example, if the causative agent is a drug or is a treatment, then probably there is a other uh, supportive treatment to reduce these negative effects. So, do you plan yeah. or? Uh, mm -hmm. or not to yes. to dig a little bit deeper and so it was so impressive Eros uh, presentation that in Finland people look for projects for 10 years long or 15 uh, years long so uh, the target is just to reach the PhD level and the, uh, whatever the, <laughs> the instrument for it or because you discovered a very interesting association that in brain tumor is higher and infratentorial tumors uh, associated with even higher major depression. Well, what, is, what is the cause? Yeah, so the short answer is absolutely yes, and uh, I, I plan to. So, uh, as, as I mentioned, uh, so it's it's the answer lays somewhere uh, in the confounding factors that were not analyzed in this study, I, I think. So uh, it can be the treatment itself, uh, but I think it's something altogether. So, but, but yeah, we absolutely like to it in the cohort study and also uh, uh, with, with controls and uh, as, as I mentioned with other types of tumors, uh, with uh, individual patient data and, and with that uh, information, that will be the goal. Uh, it will be like awesome to find something that uh, would be right, really, uh, we were able to prevent it. Uh, of course, if we are speaking uh, about treatment, then that will be a hard question and also an ethical question because can you just use less of a treatment or an other treatment to decrease depression if it's not if it's not so effective? So, yeah. It's very important that in in the current models of uh, of psychiatry that bio, psycho and, yes. and socio cultural uh, background of the disease, but probably early interventions with antidepressants would be very beneficial combined with psychotherapy, focused uh, psychotherapy. This is most, more effective than just to detect that, oh my God, every fifth of the patient's long life or uh, for years uh, suffers in major depression. So sorry. Yeah, okay. strong. So just, uh, I think I can have a kind of a recommendation. If you do such a study, it's probably worth to add other control groups like uh, pediatric patients suffering from rare diseases like Duchenne muscular dystrophy, cystic fibrosis, who, who have to face the, the consequence of the disease, or even like uh, 
quality sports of the Crohn's disease, which affects the quality of life. Uh, and I don't know, I have no information about the, the ratio of depression in those patients, but I would guess that it's higher than the general. Yes, we also planned that we had uh, this uh, conversation with uh, the rheumatologic board, but also it will fit like every disease, as you said, so with uh, GI patients, we plan to measure also uh, for comparison. So yeah, thank you. We plan to.